Today I'm going to show you how to change the Saab 93 coolant T that's fitted in the top hose from the head to the radiator and give you a short explanation about why you should remove the stock Saab 93 coolant T connector that's fitted from the factory. So stay tuned, let me show you how. So why am I suggesting that you should routinely change your plastic T-piece to this aluminium T-piece? After all, it's not broke, so why fix it? And yes, I would normally agree, but there are exceptions. Now that I've got it off, the material markings on this are PA66 GF30, glass filled 30% nylon 66. Now that's a very good material to make this from. It has good thermal stability, very strong, good creep uh, properties as well, which is great considering it's being clamped for, for its lifetime. But like an awful lot of uh, plastics, with the heat that it uh, experiences in the cooling system, which is ordinarily up around the 90 degree C mark, potentially uh, higher than that on occasions, the plastic does degrade and the polymer chains in the plastic do break down and that causes the plastic to crack, which eventually causes failure. And you can see that on mine, by the way, the end of the small outlet has, uh, has broken away. And that's why they snap here, leaving this bit in the turbo pipe. And of course, because this is the outlet from the head to the radiator and picking up the outlet from the turbo, that allows water to just spill straight down over your alternator, straight down over your compressor for your aircon. You will be left stranded wherever you are and that this happens to happen. That this happens to happen. <laughs> that makes sense. And, and you'll be requiring rescue. Now the lifetime requirement of the OEs are around 10 to 12 years, 120 to 150,000 miles. So this was a good engineering material to pick and in my case it has certainly met that. Uh, th this car is uh, now 13 years old and has done 150,000 miles. So it has met its lifetime requirements. But of course, out in the real world, lifetime requirement could be 20 years, 200,000 miles, 30 years, three, 400,000 miles and these will degrade and almost certainly break. It took me about 40 minutes to change this and that includes the filming. And it costs what? It, well, depending on where you are in the world, you're looking at between 25 and 40 pounds for one of these with postage. Well worth it for what we engineers would call failure mode avoidance. Failure mode avoidance is the name of a, a methodology that uh, engineers like myself use in our jobs uh, to robustly engineer components so that they will last the lifetime requirement. The obvious reason that GM had these fitted to these engines of course is because these moulded plastic parts are cheaper than an aluminium or steel fabricated or cast part. I'll put a link to this one down in the description but let's get right down to actually changing it now. Before you do anything else put something under your car, plenty of newspaper, a bit of old carpet and a, and a bowl to catch any coolant spillage that you might make, well, that you will make. Make sure to position it so that you're gonna catch as much as possible. Also, use an old shopping bag or something, piece of cardboard to do even, just to uh, protect your engine ECU and your alternator from splashes. Next, remove the coolant cap. Now, if you've got uh, a hand siphon, it's a good idea at this stage to siphon as much of the coolant out of the uh, reservoir as you can. Unfortunately, as is always the case with these things, Sod's Law says that just when I need mine, it's busted. If your car's still got the original plastic T-piece in, then all, the only tool you're gonna need is a pair of pipe grips to remove these spring clips. Lift those away off the junction. Use your pipe grips loosen the pipe on the union and I suggest taking the turbo return hose off first. Make sure of course underneath that you're catching as much of that coolant as possible and any that you're not managing to catch is landing on your bit of carpet or cardboard or whatever. Try not to let the coolant run into the surface drains or for that matter even just down the road or on the drive. It's uh, extremely poisonous to small animals and use your grips to do the same on the main body of the T. You should find it comes out quite easily. It's then a relatively simple matter 
just to push the uh, new T-piece on. You'll find that it's a bit longer than the original one. Obviously make sure you've pushed your clip on the top one there far enough away. I'll put some links to uh, new clips in the description. Bought me new tea and completely forgot about the clips. I should have got new clips. If you are getting new clips, you'll need 38 millimeter clips. Now something I've just noticed, you'll see that the end of the turbo return side of my tea has broken off. And in fact, the broken end is still inside my hose here. You won't be able to see it, but it's still there. So what I'm going to do to get rid of it is holding that piece pointing downwards I'm going to break it, knock the bits out. Fortunately this is the return side from the turbo so when coolant starts to flow through this tube any tiny little bits that are left in there will go into the T and will then go into the radiator and hopefully will settle in the bottom of the radiator. I have also just noticed but there is a tiny little split in this hose so I'm actually going to cut a fresh end on it which you can do with a sharp knife or a stout pair of wire cutters. I'm thinking that this flange on this new T-piece must be larger than the flange on the original plastic one because I couldn't get the uh, clip over. So I'm putting a, a slightly larger Jubilee clip on. So when you buy your new clips, buy a clip suitable for 22 millimeters rather than just 20. And when you're doing these clips up, apply a little lube into the uh, threads there. You'll also find that these are an awful lot easier to do up if you use a small socket. So these Jubilee clips are usually a six or a seven. Make sure that your clip goes on on the T body side of the flange so that the hose cannot pull off. And just nip it down hand tight. No need to go mad, don't crush it. You could paint the tea piece before you put it on if you want it to be body colour or black. I'm, I'm not overly fussed personally. Don't forget of course to refill your coolant. Use fresh because uh, the coolant that ran down through the car onto the uh, into your bucket or bowl is bound to have picked up dirt and debris on its way. Pour the coolant into the reservoir gently until you reach the level mark here. The eagle-eyed amongst you may well have noticed that I've just poured water in there and not a coolant mixture, but that's only because my car is now due its five-year coolant change and I also am having the head changed soon in order to put right the valves issue that this engine's suffering from. Give the hoses a squeeze, get rid of any uh, trapped air. Once you're done, leave the coolant cap off and start up. Make sure that the coolant level doesn't drop and that there are no leaks. Return your cap. And of course, do be sure to dispose of any old coolant responsibly. If you've got the facility locally to be able to take it somewhere for, for collection, then great. If you haven't, then uh, pour it down the sewer so that it'll go for treatment. Do not pour it into a land drain. It's uh, highly dangerous to both small mammals and aquatic life. And small quantities are easily dealt with by the uh, bacteria and chemicals at your local sewerage works. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down by the title. Maybe consider buying me a cup of coffee if it saved you some money. And I shall see you on the next one.